Welcome, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Linda Tovash, Senior Advisor for the Korea Society, uh, Senior Advisor in Education, I should say. And for those of you who are not as familiar with what we do, we're a non-governmental, non-profit organization solely dedicated to the purpose of raising awareness, understanding, and cooperation between the peoples of the United States and Korea. And I'm extremely pleased um, today that we're offering this discussion. Tiki Taka, Ways of Seeing Contemporary Korean Architecture and Design. And to welcome Dong Se Kim, Dong Woo Kim, and Jean Im. But before we begin, I do have some logistics. First, we will have time qu for questions at the end. Uh, for those of you here in New York, we'll be passing around a microphone uh, so that you can ask. And for those of you who are joining us virtually, uh, some of you did send in questions. Others, if you have questions as we have the discussion, please just send those to Korean Studies, one word, at koreasociety.org, and we'll be monitoring that. We'll try to get to as many questions as we can, but given sometimes time constraint, I can't promise that we'll get to uh, all of them. Secondly, at the conclusion, as you, so those of you here in New York know, we have some light refreshments in the back. They will still be available, so feel free to stay and chat and network. And also, we'll hold our drawing uh, for the books uh, Dong says uh, Kim's uh, drawing Hua Jung and uh, Dong Wu Kim's uh, accessories. Um, again, I apologize to those who are joining us uh, virtually. It's just for those who are, are here present with us. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Jean Im, uh, who's our moderator for the evening. Uh, Ms. Im is an architectural practitioner and a curator based in New York. She holds a Bachelor's of Architecture uh, from the Korean National University of Arts, and she earned her Master's of Science in Critical, Curatorial, and Conceptual Practices from Columbia University's Graduate School for Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. She began her career as a designer in numerous architectural firms, mainly in Seoul, but she shifted to curatorial works uh, in the role such as the assistant curator at the Gwangju Design Biennial, and most recently as chief editor at the Seoul Biennial of Architecture and Urbanism. Further, she broadened her curatorial practices to arts and culture, such as the World Scripps and Symposium and ECM exhibits in Seoul and Shanghai and more. She was also an organizing member of the Young Architects Forum and open house in Seoul. And I have to say, um, this move from just pure architecture, practitioner, architectural practitioner, to uh, curation and curatorial works um, is how she ended up in New York. And also, this particular uh, topic this evening really resonates with her. And that's because in her journey, her path, again, it was this move from architectural design to sort of ways of seeing and new ways of seeing. So thank you so much, and I'm going to turn this over to Jean. Um, and before we hear from Dongse and Dongwu about their works, I'll try to introduce the um, Jikitaka Collective in my or, old, uh, own words in, in more of a historical context. So Tikitaka Collective was founded by Dongse Kim, Dongwu Im, Irun Kang, Jung Ye Kang, Jin Hong Jeon, and Yuni Choi. They are four architects and two graphic designers who at once were spread out in three different time zones, New York, Hawaii, and Seoul. Um, they not only have their own design practices, but also teach in universities, aside from um, being dads and moms. They met via Zoom starting in the beginning of the COVID pandemic in the year 2020, um, every two weeks for more than a year. But what were they talking about and why when construction projects were on halt and public spaces were empty? Some architects were responding to pressing issues like designing temporary spaces um, for COVID patients, vaccination sites, or sheds for outdoor dining. Um, other architects might have been questioning what they uh, could do if the world no longer needs built spaces, um, buildings. Um, and I was one of those on a project doubting the need of an architect in the virtual world. 
Like this, architects constantly question their roles in the evolving, ever-evolving world. But I think Tiki Taka was planning something else. And if we start with their name, it refers to a style of play where the players maintain possession of the ball through short, rapid, rapid passing and movements in so soccer. But initially is the name of a toy uh, in Spanish that has two balls and the challenge is for the balls to interact to each other. They say a Spanish broadcaster first coined the term in soccer, in a soccer game in 2006. And somehow now it is also a popular term in Korean culture. Celebrities nowadays use it frequently in non-soccer circumstances like talk shows and reality dating shows. There is even a dating app called Tiki Taka. But what does it mean for architects? Uh, what is the ball? What is the goal? And what is the method? Uh, in Tongse's book, Drawing Hwajeng, he described it as the act of passing ideas off one another in an informal way to test and further refine emerging ideas and thoughts through a series of conversations and dialogues. To me, this sounds, in the most simplest terms, a platform for architects. Um, to, so to get into a little bit of history about these platforms, um, there have been many different platforms where architects were able to exchange ideas and conversations about architecture. It may have started in the form of a personal collection of building parts, drawings, and models a couple of hundreds of years ago. And along with the history of institutionalized educational and professional systems, Architectural documents started to be collected and exhibited in schools, organizations of registered architects, uh, and finally the public cultural settings like museums and foundations. I believe the dissemination of print media like books and magazines are another type of platforms, but the most significant uh, are the architecture biennales that started in Venice in the 1980s. Uh, followed by many more biennales and triennales around the world in cities like Shenzhen, Lisbon, Chicago, and Seoul. And finally, with the new waves of online platforms, the range of audience expanded to the wider public, especially with uh, as images. But how were the architectural platforms for uh, were in in Korea specifically? There have been informative and technical magazines and expos around construction and housing since the colonial years and during the rebuilding of the country after the war. But one of the earlier, most symbolic magazines for architecture and the arts is Space, founded by the architect Kim Sugun in the 60s, who also designed a performance space as part of his studio for architects and urbanists, designers, and artists to collaborate and experiment. I think you might be able to see some of that in the Guggenheim uh, right now. Um, and more magazines followed also in the 70s and 80s where architects' names as designers started to gain recognition. While there was, a st while there was still a blurred line between architecture design and con um, building construction, and only around 2010, a variety of formal and informal platforms and movements for architecture and architects start to flourish in Korea, such as the Cheongnim Foundation, Mokchan Archive, and uh, in MMCA, the Museum of Modern Contemporary Art hired an architecture curator. Um, and uh, in a smaller scale, there were little organizations called Young Architects Forum, Open House Seoul, and in a much larger scale, in 2016, a new policy was implemented for the city and national institutions um, to take part in the improvement of architectural culture, which trigger, triggered um, the Seoul Biennial of uh, Architecture and Urbanism, the Seoul Hall of Urbanism and Architecture, and finally, the Korean Museum of Urbanism and Architecture that will open in 2025. But a majority of these platforms are somewhat very official and institutionalized, a gathering for professional designers and uh, academics and historians, sometimes restricted to registered architects and PhDs. 
centered around architecture and urbanism as in buildings and cities. So what is Tikitaka trying to do that defines them from their predecessors? And what is their unique ball and passing strategy? Um, and we hope we can find that today um, from their presentations. Uh, and I will introduce the two gentlemen here briefly. Dong Se Kim is an architect, urbanist, and assistant professor of architecture at the New York Institute of Technology. His current research focuses on architecture and urbanism's relationship to nation state borders across multiple scales. It examines notions of inclusion and exclusion and how us and them are defined through spatial practices. His research on the Korean demilitary, demilitarized zone has been internationally recognized through multiple exhibitions and publications. Dong Se received his Master in Design Studies with distinction from Harvard Graduate School of Design, a Master of Science in Architecture and Urban Design from Columbia University, and a Professional Bachelor of Architecture with honors from Victoria University of Wellington. He was named the 2018 Sherman Family Emerging Scholar by the Korea Society in New York City. And Dong Woo Im is, we're not related, is an <laughs> architect, urbanist, writer, and educator. He's the co-founder and principal of PROUD, P-R-A-U-D, and an assistant professor at the Graduate School of Architecture and Urban Design at Hongik University. His research focuses on revisiting urban production as a mode for a circular city and a sustainable social chain. Dong Woo also explores typologies in architecture that not only examine contemporary architectural language, but also create urban phenomena in a collective manner. He's the award winner of the Architectural League Prize 2013 and the participating artist in the 2014 Venice Biennial Korean Pavilion, the Golden Lion winner. Also a co-curator of the Pyongyang Salim at the 2017 Seoul Biennial, uh, co-curator of the Cities Exhibition in the 2019 Biennial, and the general director of Tegu Global Studio 2023. His publications include AD Magazine, <coughs> Uh, production Urbanism, The Meta-Industrial City, A Language of Contemporary Architecture, An Index of Topology and Typology, and Unprecedented Pyongyang, among others. So I think now it's Dong Se to start. Okay. <clears throat> Just find my clicker somewhere yeah. behind me. You're sitting on it. Oh, sorry, it's in my <laughs> pocket. So uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction. Um, and good afternoon and good morning to some who are joining from uh, Seoul. I know I have some uh, friends and colleagues who are joining online. Um, so today I want to briefly summarize uh, my publication, Hua Zheng, The Drawing Hua Zheng, Mapping Contested Territories for Imagination, uh, that uses mapping that produces spatial knowledge that help us to imagine alternative futures for contested territories. As mentioned, this publication is a small milestone for the larger discussion we're having through Tikitaka Collaborative. And this is a map uh, it's a little bit hard to see from this uh, location here, but it's uh, a map that describes the conversation that we had in May 2022 on Zoom as part of the lecture and event series at New York Tech. And you can see the spatial configuration of New York on the right top corner and Seoul where Dongwu and Pare was based and Hawaii where Irun was based. And you can see the geographical uh, dispersion at the same time, it's a, it's a simultaneous platform that has a uh, conversation uh, enabled through the online uh, platform. So here is a snippet of that conversation that we had. And back to the book, it is a bilingual book written in English and Korean, which in itself is a very interesting endeavor for me. 
And this is uh, the book's table of contents, also in English and Korean. For the purpose of this uh, conversation today, I just want to highlight seven points of mapping that relates to this research that allows us to go towards a new understanding of a place and issues. First, I use the mapping as a means to generate questions and conversations, not to just ask, uh, not to just seek solutions. This is a spread in the book that describes why I map. And here I say, I believe a good mapping project leads you to generate conditions for multiple meaningful questions to materialize rather than merely providing a solution to a predetermined question. Mapping is an opening up tool for exploring possibilities rather than finding a solution for my practice. So I now probably need to talk about what Hua Jing is. Some of you may already know what that term means, and this is a series of pages that talk about that. But Hua Jing is a philosophy and a working method that Wan Hyo, who was one of the leading thinkers and writers and commentators of the Korean Buddhist tradition, is that, uh, established when he attempted to address, the, and address and reconcile the contradictory Buddhist sectarianism in the seventh century. According to the Korean philosopher John Ho Gun, Hua, I'll just go back a slide, sorry. Hua, character of Hua Zheng is the logic of concord and consolidation. The second character, Cheng, is made up of two characters, on argument, and uh, on speaking, and Cheng, argument, which is about arguing and debating through words. He says that, therefore, the theory of Hua Zheng is about reconciling all kinds of Cheng arguments into forms of consolidation through conversations and arguments. At the same time, Hua Zheng's um, Hua and Cheng may be understood as the opposite of each other. Defining characteristics of Hua Zheng theory is arriving at the understanding that this seemingly opposite Hua and Zheng are not different from each other, but understanding both as different ways of seeking the truth. And these are some of the documentation of the conversations I had throughout the Tiki Taka Collective and the second is, the second point is, I use mapping to locate myself and my subjectivity in the context of a site and an issue, which clarifies my position within them. So this is a, a map that illustrates my life trajectory. I think this was from 2019, that directly connect to the issues of border crossings and cosmopolitan experience and points of view that inform my research. The third is about extracting and editing information. I consider these one to 50,000 armistice agreement maps of the DMZ from 1953 as a role map. And then I extract information from these maps and the text from the agreements that start to inform the production of my own base maps, such as this base map. And using those base maps and let different layers of information overlay to it and edit it, produce a knowledge base and a place and space for further analysis and imagination. Fourth is about uh, mapping spatial change over time. Places change over time and tracing this change with mapping allows us to understand the dynamic forces that make space and place. Fifth is about providing new ways of seeing, organizing, and understanding. Maps can be turned around. Maps can be transformed to transformed into animations. Maps can be used to inform long-term histories. Maps can compare. 
Maps can represent complexities. Maps can critique. Maps can be used to imagine new territories. Maps can be used to imagine new polities and governance, such as turning the current DMZ into a new demos making zone. Here I suggested DMZ, a new DMZ. And sixth, my maps aim to engage a range of scales. Extra large, large, small, and in between scales that talk to each other and inform each other. The last point of my mapping is about telling stories that build knowledge and conditions for imaginaries to emerge through different forms of conversations. Maps tell stories through different mediums, through challenging dominant representations that creates new knowledge, And through these framings, I explore new alternatives and narratives for the future of a contested territory through speculative designs such as these. And have these knowledge produced disseminated through exhibitions and publications such as these. In conclusion, creative mapping that engages the notion of huajian can generate meaningful spatial knowledge that produce ingredients to imagine new futures for contested territories. Thank you very much. Should I just move on? Uh, <clears throat> so as uh, Jean and uh, Tongse briefly, briefly mentioned, uh, this uh, tiki-taka is kind of a, a collective and also uh, some sort of activities uh, that, that, that we started to do. And then uh, uh, today, uh, just as uh, Dongsa just presented, I'm briefly going to uh, show what I have in my book. Uh, perhaps we can talk about the tiki-taka a bit later after the uh, during the discussion session but uh, here uh, I want to show my sort of uh, ongoing concern I have uh, ever since I moved back to to Seoul so I I grew up in Seoul I I, I, I was educated there I I, uh, I I did my bachelor's degree there and then I um, uh, moved to Boston and uh, and studied and practiced there for 11 years, then went back. So when I went back, there was kind of a, some sort of a concern, right? Because I, uh, I had some uh, westernized, um, uh, or, or I learned westernized methodologies, uh, especially in urban analysis and urban studies. So I brought that. Uh, to to Korea, and then uh, I was applying that uh, in many uh, many analysis uh, uh, with students, and then realized that hmm, some of them doesn't really uh, fit uh, uh, to to the conditions that, that that we have because our cities are not the same as the Western cities. So the, so now the 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 concern I have is that uh, that. Can there be another way of understanding our cities? So this is one of the kind of uh, the first initial step that that uh, we had. So I began to try to understand the phenomena of the city. So what's going on basically? So I don't know the reason, but I just know the phenomena. So that's what I started to kind of uh, uh, research on and, and, and put it on this book. Uh, so uh, basically, the accessories, uh, there are 20-something categories that I found 
in, in, in the book, which I, I will explain a bit later. But uh, today, uh, to condense it, uh, I, I uh, reframed it uh, into uh, in more of a category that's related to the production, because that's where I started to have uh, or open up my eyes to these accessories. So when we talk about um, adaptive reuse uh, in general in, in, in architecture field, so basically it's about reusing the existing building. So basically uh, uh, this is old factory, for example, and then you, you can do adaptive reuse of, of that. And that's, of course, you, you can see that uh, everywhere, uh, uh, including New York and also in Seoul as well. But uh, when, we, when we think about that uh, idea of adaptive reuse, that this is something that, 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 that applies well uh, with the conventional term of adaptive reuse, meaning that the, the basically overall structure, including facade, is kept and the inside can be adapted. But uh, here in Seoul, which probably uh, you're familiar with, we change things uh, of the outside. So there's not much of, a, let's say, these uh, prestige facade to keep, but basically uh, the, the look of the, the buildings or the street uh, skips are kept on changing. So that, that, that uh, extrovert adaptive reuse is what's happening. So basically that, that's also an, a different kind of um, a situation that we have in, in cities. So instead of uh, going into the elements of architecture, in, in, in architecture we, we also learn a lot about what is elements and what, it, what are the fundamentals of architecture. Uh, that in, in history and in theory, which is also based on uh, on the in, on the Western uh, methods, which is fine uh, because that that one also helps us to understand uh, what the uh, elements of traditional architecture, of traditional Korean architecture is. But uh, now uh, here I'm just using the accessories of architecture because. Uh, uh, there are more, way more temporal and light and sometimes portable uh, than the actual elements of architecture. And, and I'll go through that, but uh, I believe these element or these accessories are the ones that define what the building is or what the usage of the building is. So this is uh, the area where, where uh, my office is located, and it's called a semi-industrial zone area where you can have all these micro factories, meaning that, it's, uh, that, that the, you cannot have like, a, let's say, a, a Ford Motors uh, factory there, but you, you can have very small uh, factory buildings. So, so it, when you see this, uh, this photo, you cannot, tell whether that's a industrial zone or residential zone or, or others, right? But when you go into that, there are many micro factories. And one of the, uh, one of the reasons why they can house those factories are not because of the building types, but because of the accessories that are attached to the building. So that's uh, kind of my argument and also my, my findings when, when I was just walking around the, the neighborhood. So I'm just going to go through uh, very briefly about these uh, accessories. So for example, um, uh, in, in architecture, when, when you have to build a factory, uh, there are a, a lot of elements that you have to put. So there, there should be a loading dock, there should be a freight elevator. If you have uh, factories on second or third floor. But in, in this neighborhood, the factories are really small, super small. So you, uh, if you put a freight elevator, you don't have any space to use. So what's happening is that you just cut out uh, the, the facade and then just use the ladder truck and then, uh, and then uh, use that as a loading uh, method. So, yeah, m probably uh, architects wouldn't uh, think about that way, but 
it's happening in the neighborhood to make a generic building into uh, a factory building. Another thing is that uh, this is a, a printing shop. Uh, and in, in the printing shop, you always have a forklift bringing in and bringing out all these uh, paper boxes. And because they are very fragile, they, they shouldn't hit any kind of door jams. So how, how, do, how do you know that they're, they're not going hit, to hit it? So if, if you ask architects to, to resolve that issue, then we're going to put like all these either sensors or try to have like a, a huge door so that nothing can hit at all. But again, the restraints are that uh, you are putting a printing factory or printing shop in an existing building. So you cannot just uh, have a huge door. So what they did was uh, put a, a very simple canopy with this PVC pipe. So if the, the box hits it, they know that it's going to hit the door. But at the same time, it doesn't harm the boxes because it's very light thing that they can that they can move, right? So when it hits it, it just moves, right? So very manual, uh, but still works really well. And also, again, printing shop, if, 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 you, if you have printing machine, it's similar to our printers, but way more complicated. So if the electricity is not constant, the whole machine will be jammed. So that's very uh, scary thing for printing shops. So what they do is just bring in uh, the, the, the transformer uh, on top of their roof. So if the factory is converted into something else, let's say, then they just take that out. So, so is this the building that makes the printing shop as a factory, or is it the accessory? So those are kind of uh, the, the phenomena that I, I started to notice in the neighborhood. So, so if we think about all these accessories uh, that can be attached to uh, a very generic building, so again, uh, we, we call this one as a Frankenstein, Frankenstein uh, building. So basically, a building can just remain as is, right? And just as we, uh, in adaptive reuse, we keep the facade uh, and, and, uh, and uh, important uh, floors and change everything inside. It's the opposite. It's the other way around that we keep the building and then we just uh, change these accessories of the outside. So uh, perhaps uh, uh, you might know. So when, when you see this building, you might guess uh, that that's going to be, a, I don't know, like a, a bank building or something else. I don't know whether you've been to this one, so some Koreans will know what that building is from reading that. But uh, yesterday, when 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 I showed it to to other folks, uh, some of them thought that that's a bank building, which is a fine guess. But when you see the other uh, rear facade, that's the all the ducks. So yeah, this is a barbecue place. So. Uh, and this is super authentic building, right? And they didn't even uh, convert it a bank building to a barbecue place. Ba uh, basically, they built a new building for barbecue place, but with this look outside and then on the back, that's what's happening. So when we think about it, what does uh, define the, the use of the building or the performance of the building. So those are the kind of uh, interesting questions that, uh, that I start to have when, 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 when I started to witness all these uh, phenomena that's, uh, that's happening, which I didn't really see much uh, when I was in Boston. So that's a uh, kind of uh, basic question that I wanted to raise up uh, and share with other uh, other people in the in the field and uh, in outside of the architecture field so which is why I put, put those uh, ideas in, in 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 the book so again 
uh, I'm an architect, as I was introduced. So those kind of a, a series of, uh, let's say, these research on accessories brought me another question that then what do we do? Because all these accessories, as you may know, those are not, by, uh, those are not designed by architects. They just happen. The owners do it. So then what, what do we provide or what can we provide if we accept the fact that the building will function anyways uh, with the input of, uh, let's say, non-architects, right? So it's kind of also a very fundamental uh, question that, that I began to have. But again, so uh, uh, the Tikitaka is not trying to like write a I don't know, 60,000 word PhD thesis, but it's more of, okay, these are the kind of questions that I have, and what do you guys think is uh, something that we, we the, one of the reasons why we started the Tiki Taka. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I've actually never seen it as a presentation. Mm -hmm. And I think um, maybe my first question is, where do you find time to do all this mm. <laughs> as an architect and teaching and being parents? Mm -hmm. um, and I, I guess I, I would like to call these topics accessories and mapping, hua uh, jing, as the ball, like in the soccer game, Tiki Taka. It's like ideas. And I don't know if how many of you here are architects, but maybe a, a lot of you might have been expecting ideas about building design. And architects usually do work uh, when a client asks for you to do a project. But these kind of research are, they're just doing it on their own. It's not like someone paid them to do it. They're spending this much time and energy to, to make these beautiful drawings um, and do this research. And I guess I think it'd be helpful to, for you to kind of tell us more about the idea, the idea of, that you were talking about, the ball of this, the, in, in, this, in this game. Like why do architects, why are architects doing mapping mm. and, and making these kind of drawings? Why do you, why do you map? <laughs> Uh, I think partially uh, the mapping as a method emerged in my original interest in the Korean division and um, to understand the conditions that we are in uh, in Korea, in the Korean Peninsula, uh, as an architect or as a spatial designer, obviously your contribution can be quite limited but I also thought, especially as a very young uh, architectural student, uh, that there were uh, specific roles that designers could play in not only understanding the Korean division, but to uh, imagine a different kind of future. And that kind of goes back to my original sort of uh, interest in the topic of the Korean division and also as a designer, spatial designer and architect. And I found the mapping to be one of the best uh, tools to uh, understand the division that I was interested in. Uh, in doing so, I also uh, found that the mapping could be a very effective way to understand myself. And it's partially a selfish thing, but uh, it has allowed me to uh, reflect on the identity that I do have and how I practice as an architect and educator uh, in the, the background that I have. So I use the mapping as uh, multiple kind of, uh, almost like a MacGyver, <laughs> you know, a knife tool to deal with multiple things. Swiss knife. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, think, uh, I think, yes, I think uh, why, uh, because nobody's paying for it. Um, yeah, I think I, I don't know why I'm doing it. Um, because yes, as, as you said, it's very, 
time consuming thing and uh and, and also it's not like um again it's, it's not uh, because you don't have work right it's not because <laughs> i don't have work but uh i i think i'm i'm a very noisy guy i'm very oh uh, whenever i see something i i'm, I'm very curious about things uh, of uh, what's happening especially um, related to the city and the spatial uh, uh, elements of the city so so it's uh, first I start with my own personal curiosity but then I think uh, it is also related to the fact that uh, I'm an educator uh, and uh, I have somewhat in my mind I always think that I have uh, obligation that I need to share something with my student mm -hmm. other than just let's say teaching in school so uh, uh, just as I briefly mentioned that okay uh, how do we understand our cities how do we understand our built environment uh, it's, it's not something that can always be taught in school, especially with all these, let's say, existing materials, and existing methodologies. So, uh, so yeah, I, I also, I also uh, 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 tell students that how important it is to 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 have mappings, right? So, so something like that. So. Uh, it may not be taught in the class, but uh, through these uh, very brief research and showing the perspective of on, on, on understanding our built environment, hopefully, I hope that they also influence to, to students. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, so I guess I think we briefly talked about this. Um, there are groups, organizations, I, uh, specifically I could name Forensic mm -hmm, Architecture mm -hmm. based in London. They, their main work is not designing buildings, but they use architectural tools to, uh, to help wars, uh, to investigate war strategies. They go to actually war zones and using the traces mm -hmm. and images and visualization methods to figure out how the enemy, um, how what their strategy was, forensic and plan, architecture. yes, forensic yeah. architecture, but they are paid to do that, and that's <laughs> their main job. But in they and, they they get super well paid, yes, much yes. more than that. Yeah. Um, and they have their own department in the school now. But and but we talked about how why that is not happening in Korea. There, mm -hmm. I think in Europe and a bit, I think in the U.S., there are architects who are not designing buildings, mm -hmm. but using uh, their skills and methods to do other um, projects that are not really about built structures. And I think that is, we uh, Korean architects always talk about why can't that happen in Korea? Mm -hmm. And I feel like Tiki Taka might be kind of like the first team to be questioning that and trying to do something about it. Um, but then it also comes to, so Tiki Taka is about the soccer, uh, in soccer is about fast, informal. And my question is why a book in this time when you can mm -hmm. use the social network where it's more informal, quick, you could reach to the global audience instantly, but why a book? I mean, I, I do get, especially with Tong Se's project, that you probably do need a lot of, because um, you have images that you really have to look carefully. Like even in the book, I feel like it is quite small, that like you can't really read the map. And maybe that was the reason. But then if, to when I look at it, if dissemination is important, it could be like a newsprint format, but you have this small, easy to carry, easy to take home size book. So why is it a book? I think the newsprint was one of the medium that we talked about at 
various point, uh, yeah. conversations we had and we talked about different mediums and we had the exact question why a book and uh, for me personally I think uh, especially as a, a person involved in academic uh, realm you have these very uh, scientific driven methodology driven peer review articles which takes years and is very uh, constrained to certain parameters and then buildings as architects which takes a lot of time energy resources um, and then you have the more instant social media and I think they all have their sort of places but I, I do feel that the book in this case um, for me, at least, uh, became a very important uh, medium, not just as a product, but as a medium for me to organize a lot of the thoughts that I had and to use it to narrate some of the fundamental questions that, that I was using. And I think it can be a very slow uh, medium, but in relation to the building or the peer-reviewed sort of journals, I think it's faster the way we were uh, using it or uh, writing it and publishing it. It could have been faster, um, but it feels. I feel like it's somewhere in the middle between the very fast-paced social media and then what we see as a very slow academic publishing process. Uh, for me, so that's why I think for me the book in this format was very useful. And I'm sure Tongu has some similar thoughts, but uh, probably has some other thoughts as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, again, uh, as Tongse mentioned, uh, so um, so let me put this way. Put it this way. So tiki taka is kind of uh, something that we hope to happen through these books, but at the same time, tiki taka happened. Uh, in our conversation in the past mm -hmm. one or two years of a series of Zoom meetings. So we, we, we were keep on kind of discussing on even those small things. Oh, uh, should it be this format or that format? So, so uh, basically, yeah, uh, in the end of the day, we said that, yes, uh, this might be a, a good uh, medium. But at the same time, we, we, we all agree that uh, the book is not the only sort of uh, 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 final product or activities that we, 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 we think uh, uh, to, to, to develop. So it, it still can, things can uh, be also developed uh, in, in, in in uh, digital uh, mediums and uh, platforms, as 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 uh, you know that uh, the book uh, limits many things as well. For example, if if you are a media artist and we want to invite you to to have mm -hmm. uh, conversation uh, in the tiki taka, then oh, how, how am I, I going to put all these media art? In a publication format, so yeah, I mean, in a way, book it, it, these days, uh, it's quite a kind of a constraining uh, medium. But at the same time, as Tongz has said, maybe we are just old school. But um, as Tongz has said, uh, that uh, the the book format is less uh, the. The, the 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 digital media I think is uh, it, it evaporates so quickly I think even though you can find it mm -hmm. you can find like a, a, a an article ten years ago but still it's uh, somehow it evaporates whereas this one uh, probably in may not be as uh, effective as the digital uh, platforms in terms of spreading the words out there. But I just believe that it stays there so that uh, even uh, five or 10 years later, people still can see the book as if uh, they are the, the current issues, I hope. So yeah, 
And to, to some degree, I think the, we are using the book as a way to have these kind of conversations. Mm-hmm. And I would consider this conversation as part of the expansion of the Tiki Taka that we're trying to have. And if you look at the book, the, at the bottom there is in Korean Tiki Taka S1, which is referring to the season one. Uh, that includes myself, Tung Woo, and then the two other authors who will be publishing a book very similar to this, uh, Irun Kang and also Pare Architects in Seoul. But season two, if it happens, and I hope it happens, is, uh, you know, different format. it could be a very different format, as you say, and I think it's an evolving conversation, and um, we'll, we'll see what happens. It, it might be a more digital platform, but... Uh, we wanted to actually, you know, work with something that we are somewhat familiar and then make it and then use it to move forward. Um, but you use the word informal to describe it. Like, what does this make it informal? I mean, and you could have also asked uh, an existing magazine to do a series. But, like, how does this, how is this informal? I think it was kind of because I used the word informal because it was a bit organic. It wasn't uh, something that uh, an institution had a call out or a call. It was more of an organic thing that emerged from the conversations I had with Tongu because I knew him prior to this uh, Tiki Taka collective. And uh, then we invited uh, Pare and then because we wanted to not have this conversation within just the discipline of architecture. We also invited uh, Irun Kang, who is a graphic designer, a very talented uh, designer. And um, so, yeah, I think that was the reason to call it sort of an informal thing. But then we also wanted to really keep it um, relatively um, free of all these maybe baggages in a way associated with the peer review kind of publications that I talked about and to bounce off ideas within certain kind of, it could be maybe seen as an exclusive thing, but where you have people that you know to a degree that you can really talk to about some of the things that are work in progress rather than something that's complete and you present as a complete right. project. Okay. Um... And speaking of players, uh, is it important to have a lot of players, or what? And or are you going to keep making books within your circle, or is it? Are you? Is that like a priority? What to... do you mean by your circle? <laughs> that you started with? <laughs> no, I mean, uh... no. I was just asking because if you meant. The circle as uh, uh, kind of the people who are close to us and mm-hmm. who, who 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 we are familiar with. Of course not. Of course not. And 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 like Dong Sae just mentioned that uh, we we never want it to be um, kind of an exclusive activity. But anyone can just yeah. say, "Hey, I want." Yeah, 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 yeah. I have an idea. Right, right. I think that that's the whole point. We we just started um, to publish our own thing because because for example at least we can have this conversation Mm -hmm. but if we didn't have any book nothing just with the idea uh, maybe Dongsei and I can uh, have uh, some consensus but when it goes to other person the person will say uh, or think about something else uh, that 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 is totally different from what what we mentioned, or 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 yeah. So I think I think uh, we we just uh, did it or started with our own thing, not because we want it to be exclusive, but because we just want to share. This is one of the the the, the formats or the the, the process that, that that we do, and if somebody comes in we hope that that person doesn't have to have two years of zoom meeting <laughs> to 
to understand. You're not going to screen them. No. You're, not, you're open to everyone <laughs> yeah, yeah, and yeah, anyone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, okay. our publisher, who is also part of this team, uh, she has certain uh, limitation in in terms of uh, number of books uh, every right. year, but because it's a lot of investment uh, for the publisher as well. So, but yeah, but but not. But oh, actually, I should say that. Uh, even though you don't, even though we don't have like any kind of a screening process, whatever. Uh, but uh, one of the the reasons why we initiated this was that that um, that we we wanted to show that uh, the uh, architects, the role of architects, are way uh, wider than. Than, uh, than you think, in, especially in Korea. You briefly mentioned that, that in, in Korea, uh, a lot of uh, people, even, even, even architects themselves, uh, think their, their, their role is just designing a building, which is true. But I think uh, it can be expanded way, way uh, to a larger context. So probably we may uh, screen out, let's say, an architect who try who Let's tries promote. to have a monograph here, yeah. right? Because this is not about that. Yeah, right. it's this is not about that. Yeah. Um, well, and uh, I guess a lot of people might be asking, mm -hmm. who's funding all this? <laughs> publisher. <laughs> the publisher. I mean, the the the, the research. Yes, uh, it's either the research itself. Uh, for, for my thing, I just. Did it by myself. Uh, maybe some people. I don't know whether uh, uh, say had some other funding for the research, but the actual book it's yeah, uh, published. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Um, is it time to maybe ask for questions from the audience? Does anyone in the audience <coughs> have a question? If you could introduce yourself and also say your affiliation, if you have one. Very interesting. Uh, I'm Young Paul. I'm a current student at Columbia University. That's where I he heard about this. Uh, I'm interested in the, you, s you said it's open or the group maybe came about organically and you thought to diversify a little bit in terms of bringing in a graphic designer. But uh, in terms of the actual process, uh, was there any uh, agenda, what was the process to curate or to, to move things along? Hmm. I mean, we, we, we did, uh, we, I mean, we, we, we uh, now it's been quite a while, so I couldn't really remember all the conversations that we had, but but I, I think uh, so. For example, when when we are setting up, uh, each of us was setting up this publication. Of course, it's hundred percent your 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 own thing, and of course, it's this is not a peer reviewed uh, journal, as Tung mentioned. But at the same time, we we had sessions like, okay, let's uh, today uh, let's see what. Tongsa has, so because that was part of the tiki taka that we thought during the process. So it was not trying to have or trying to review, but it was trying to find out uh, how uh, the rest of the rest, uh, how how others' input can be uh, reflected to uh, his book. We, we we couldn't uh, really realize that, but at some point we uh, thought about putting something like a postcard or or or, or index card that okay he has uh, his uh, Tongse has Huajiang book and then when when we are doing Tiki Taka uh, conversation I say oh yeah uh, let's say uh, Tongse uh, Tongse's mapping reminds me whatever 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 right so we we had that conversation in zoom on zoom and we we were kind of uh trying to experiment how those can be 
translated into publication format and then uh, put it there. But then, but then in the end of the day, we, we, we couldn't. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. The big thing that I guess distinguished us from the conventional architects, I guess, was that we wanted to explore architecture beyond uh, designing buildings. And designing building is a very important uh, thing that architects do. And I think uh, in, in the book, there is on the last page, there's a section called Our Thinking or Uriye Sengak. And there is uh, bullet points that talk about this. Um, but the basic uh, driving agenda was to explore multiple ways architects can practice beyond designing buildings. If I can add one, because I think I've seen in um, a previous talk that the graphic designer uh, came up with like a template for them to, for you, I think, yeah. so if, if I understand yes. it, you guys worked, you put the images on the pages, right? right? You right. didn't give the images and the text and they did the editing. He came up with a template so you can work with it easily. So that that's also one of the experiments that the graphic designer wanted to have. So instead of uh, a conventional way of uh, making a publication that we uh, bring all the contents to the designer and then designer uh, have uh, almost full control on it, but rather uh, he gave us kind of a template uh, but it, that, that, that template was uh, more complicated than a very uh, generic, let's say, uh, journal type of template. But yeah, so those things were also kind of uh, very new for us. Uh, so yeah, and also, again, there was a moment when we discussed about should all these... Um, uh, layouts and, and fonts and whatever those things uh, be different in each publication or should there be some uh, similarities between them and of course there's no answer but as you can see we uh, wanted to test out uh, that template uh, idea to keep a certain kind of um, uh, similarities, but not the same, right? So, but it was all a group. I think it was mm -hmm. all a group process, right? From the ideas to the design, mm -hmm. and the layout. <laughs> Hi, my name is Anna Ha. I'm um, a public psychiatrist in New York City, so. Um, my affiliation was with, with the nonprofit. Um, and so I really know nothing about architecture, but this is so fascinating. And it's such a, um, it feels like such a lively um, forum to discuss your field. And I'm thinking that it must fulfill some kind of need that's not met in the general practice of architecture. Um, and so I'm wondering what is the reception to your work from, I guess, the more mainstream ar architecture community. Thank you. We need some more time to, <laughs> <laughs> to, to no, I mean, uh, again, uh, I, I think, uh, I, I mean, to be honest, to be honest, um, uh, uh, we, we actually didn't really promote uh, this that much, uh, not because Oh, we didn't want to, but because, uh, oh, mo mostly because we we were st we are still waiting for two other publication to be published in uh, in the first season, so so that uh, then we'll, we'll we'll have more kind of uh, receptions from uh, from uh, other people, I think. Uh, but I think the the one of the reasons why we wanted them to be more kind of uh, have uh, let's say at least like uh, five to ten publication because uh, I think that um, 
let, uh, so uh, let me say this. So if I, if I only presented tonight with my book, we will only talk about that topic. But because we presented together, now we're talking about what we're doing. So it will have more strength if we have like two more books, five more books, 10 more books. So then the, whether it's a major stream or whoever that is, or even outside of architecture field, they will be more curious to hear about, okay, what, what are these type of thing? So we're still waiting. Yeah, hope that the publisher doesn't bankrupt before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, partially, some of the things that is being done through Tikitaka is uh, related to some of my uh, old days um, frustration with architectural education partially to do with that and also in how it how it's practiced so it's uh, for me a way of critiquing that and because also I and and maybe that's also one of the reasons I'm teaching uh, to maybe change that uh, there are wonderful aspects of architectural education but also there are some not so wonderful aspects of the profession that uh, is connected to how it's um, educating the next generation of architects. And I think partially this conversation is about that in terms of what do you think about the, you know, your own definition of architecture, how it's evolving and how it's going to change and will change and how it should change. And um, I think the kind of things that we're doing is more emerging. Not It's just not us, but there are other people who are doing this or uh, many other people who are practicing in this way. So it's not totally unique, but I think there's more to be done. And I think we are just one of that kind of uh, maybe uh, trend. Um, but I think the conventional profession or the, the community that you talk about I think has been a bit more receptive of some of these other views of architecture compared to five, 10, 20 years ago. My question was, why do you think <clears throat> that is now in this moment? Yeah. I think it's becoming more and more obvious in terms of the kinds of education that um, architects and designers get and how it's connected to some of the not so good aspects of how it's practiced and it's becoming more evident or I, I, I would say also the bigger changes that are happening in, in the society that is demanding those kinds of diverse ideas to be more recognized rather than having one single sort of uh, way of practicing and teaching architecture. Yeah, and then um, and uh, in 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 our field, we a lot of uh, a lot of uh, educators say that uh, uh, we're losing discourses and uh, and young students are not following. Let's say uh, when we were educated, we always had like let's say uh, important architects and dis discourses like star architects. But now, when 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 I talk uh, with students, uh, so who do you follow? So, oh, what do you mean follow? They don't follow anybody. Uh, which is good and bad. Uh, of course, there's millions of bad reasons, but a couple of good reasons uh, could be something like that. That they they're, they're, they start to expand uh, their 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 horizon beyond the, this uh, conventional discourse, I think. One of the phenomena that's happening everywhere, I think, not only in Korea, but also here in the States and others. And if I can add one, it's, the thing is these two gentlemen here are professors in architecture schools, and I am not a registered architect nor a professor. 
And so people would question me, are you an architect? What are you? What are you? Like I've yeah. practiced in architecture firms in, for 10 years, but if I didn't mm -hmm. take the test, then I'm not an, an architect. But there are a lot of people like me who's not a registered architect, who's not a historian, but are trying to do these kind of things within architecture, which is not just buildings. But but those questions are uh, from Korean architecture. Yes, mostly, mostly right? Koreans. Yes. I, I don't think people yeah, in New York here, will say that. Well, my husband still asks me what. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think it's everyone. Yeah. All the yeah. spouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should we? Okay, I think time's up. We it's seven twenty. Okay. Um, thank you, for everyone. I think we'll probably stay around because we have some drinks and snacks. So if you have any more questions, we could continue our conversation. Absolutely. And please do. Please do stay. Enjoy yourself. Network. But we have to have the drawing. Um, again, we have two books from each of our authors and speakers. And so we're going to get out your number, your ticket. and. Um, very high chances. Very yeah. high chances. <laughs> very, very high chances. Okay. okay. Let's have our